Hey everybody, today we're gonna to go step-by-step step through the process of changing the front brake pads and rotors on a 2016 Toyota Camry. Now, this process is gonna be identical for any seventh generation Camry, so that's model years 2012 through 2017. And uh, frankly, it kind of applies to most cars and trucks on the market today. Um, the rear brakes, very similar uh, to the front, but I'm just gonna be doing the front ones today. So uh, first of all, I'm just gonna go over the tools, materials, consumables, all the things that we need to complete the job. And then again, you know, I'm gonna go step-by-step step, uh, through the whole process. So let's jump in. Okay, so let's briefly touch on all of the things that you're gonna need to complete this job. First, uh, the parts. So I have two uh, brake rotors here to replace the existing ones. Uh, of course, you could reuse and, and machine the ones that you have in your car now. Uh, for me, I think it's cheap enough, so I'm just gonna replace them. Um, I have brake pads, two sets here, one for each uh, you know, front tire. And then I have uh, hardware. Now you could reuse the hardware that's in your car now, but my set came with some there. Now let's talk about the tools that you're going to need. So starting on this end, I have the jack that just came with the car in the trunk, um, and I have two jack stands. So I'll jack up each side and put these under, uh, you know, and then uh, remove the tire and get access to the brakes that way. Next, I have three different size of sockets. I have a 14 millimeter, a 17 millimeter, this is another 17 millimeter, uh, and then a 19 millimeter. So the, the 19 millimeter is for the lug nuts uh, on your tires, and these two are remo for removing the cowper and the cowper bracket. The hammer up front here is uh, sometimes rotors get stuck on, they get corroded. My car has 90,000 miles on it, so there's a good chance I'm gonna have to bash that rotor to get it off. I also have some uh, bolts here, uh, if the hammering of the rotor doesn't work, maybe I will use the bolt and uh, I'll show you a trick for, for getting stuck rotors off using that. Next, I have a C-clamp. Uh, you could also buy a special tool for this, a, a caliper compression tool, but in any case, you're gonna have to push the piston back to accommodate uh, a larger or thicker brake pad that's less worn down. Then I have some wrenches. Uh, this is just a regular 3 8 inch drive. I also have a torque wrench so that I can get all of the bolts back to spec when, when the work is done. And I also have a large breaker bar here. This may not be necessary, but if uh, any of the bolts are stuck, uh, you know, rusted or corroded onto the caliper, this will come in handy. I also have a small adjustable wrench. Um, that's to crack the bleeder valve uh, on the caliper. And uh, lastly, I have a 17 millimeter slim wrench. Now you could also use a cone wrench, but it needs to be narrow. And that's because uh, when you're removing the 14 millimeter bolt, um, there's a 17 millimeter nut that needs to be held in place. Lastly, let's talk about consumables. So I uh, have some brake cleaner that's useful for cleaning things up at the end. I have a uh, brake lubricant or grease here. Uh, that's for uh, re-lubricating the pins and the hardware. And uh, I have some puppy pads, uh, <laughs> just so I don't ruin the concrete. You could also just use a small catch pan as well. Okay, so that about covers everything. Let's jump in. So the first thing that I recommend doing is just slightly loosening each of the lug nuts. Uh, it becomes much easier to remove the tire uh, once you've jacked the car if you do this step first. Okay, so here I am jacking up the vehicle. I'm using the cheapo jack that came with the car, which makes things pretty slow. If you have a better jack, it'll be easier. Uh, once you put the jack stand, make sure you always lock it into place. Uh, that's an important safety feature. And now we're just gonna remove each of the lug nuts uh, since we pre-loosened them before jacking up the car. This is a very easy and straightforward process. And the wheel just pops right off. And as an added safety measure, I'm gonna slide it under the car like so. Next, I'm gonna hop into the car and rotate the wheel. Uh, this is an optional step, but it'll give us better visibility and access to complete the job. I'm gonna throw a couple of puppy pads down. We'll be bleeding a little bit of brake fluid, and I just want to protect the concrete in my garage. Uh, you could use a catch pan too, or, you know, not, up to you. Next, we're gonna locate the bleeder at the back of the brake caliper. You can see I'm removing the rubber dust cover. I'll set that aside, you do not wanna lose it. And now we're just gonna crack the bleeder ever so slightly. We're looking for a little bit of fluid to drip out. Uh, we just wanna make sure that that valve works. Uh, when we go to compress the caliper down the road, we want that to work. So just check it now. It'll make your life easier later. Okay, now I'm gonna come around the back side here to give you a better view. We're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter slim wrench, or you could use a bicycle, like a cone wrench, 
uh, to hold that nut in place. Um, kind of frustrating. I actually got the wheel off and didn't realize uh, that I was going to need that wrench. So I had to do the whole thing again. But when you got the right tools, it's it's a piece of cake to do it. So you can see um, me removing this one here. It wasn't stuck at all. There was no corrosion or, or difficulty getting that one off. Moving now to the bottom of the caliper, there's an identical bolt that needs to be removed, uh, 14 millimeters. You can see I'm struggling a little bit here, but it does eventually snap free. So once the bolt is loosened, removal is a pretty straightforward process. And now the caliper is actually loose in the caliper bracket and we can lift it up and out of the way. I'm using a caliper hook here to hang the bracket out of the way without damaging the brake line. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you could jerry rig it with a coat hanger or, you know, kind of anything that's laying around. Also worth noting, if you see any leaks around in this area, you will need a new gasket. I'm not going to touch on that here, but uh, just make sure it's clean and dry before proceeding. Next, we need to remove the two 17 millimeter bolts that are holding the caliper bracket into place. You can see I'm struggling pretty hard here with the regular wrench, uh, 90,000 miles, and those bolts are corroded pretty strongly into place, but they're no match for the 25 inch breaker bar. I highly recommend having a breaker bar like this on hand, uh, just in case you run into a similar issue like I did. And don't forget to get the bolt on the bottom as well. Before we remove the caliper bracket, let's remove the old brake pads, uh, starting with these butterfly clips, which just slide right out. And then each of the old brake pads uh, slides out to the side as well. Then we can finish removing the bolts that we loosened with the breaker bar earlier and remove the bracket entirely. Now it's time to remove the old rotor from the vehicle. And in my experience, if something is going to go wrong during your brake change, it's going to be with the rotor removal. In my case, and in many cases, the rotor stuck on. You can see all of the corrosion on the front of the rotor. It's on the back too. So what I'm doing here is I'm screwing the lug nuts down and I'm leaving a little bit of a gap there. And the reason is I'm going to hit it with a hammer and I don't want to damage any of the wheel studs and make it difficult or impossible to put the wheel on later. Mm, well, it's not coming off and it looks like we got ourselves into a little bit of a pickle. So we've got a couple of options here. Option number one is take the hammer and smash the surface of that rotor. Heck, you could even take a sledgehammer and hit that thing with all you got. Really wind up and nail it. But the risk is if you damage that rotor and you're not able to get it to break free, you got a car that's almost undrivable at that point. So for that reason, we're gonna go with option number two, which just requires a couple of bolts and a couple of nuts. And as I've found with so many other things in life, the beauty in this solution lies in its simplicity. All it takes is a little bit of mechanical force and pop, the rotor comes right off. Watch. Beautiful. Now we can back those lug nuts back off and lift the rotor away. Wow, look at all that corrosion. Let's turn our attention to the caliper. The goal here is to replace the shims and then clean up the caliper and prepare it to accept new brake pads. If the brake pads that you purchased did not come with new shims, that's fine. Just remove them, clean them up, and replace them. Same steps as what I'm doing here. After removing the old shims, I'm gonna grab some parts cleaner or brake cleaner and just spray down the whole unit, making sure to avoid hitting the rubber gaskets that you can see uh, on the left side because brake cleaner can damage rubber. I'm just gonna grab a paper towel and clean it up. You can see the old metallic color start to return. As I clean here, you can see I'm paying special attention to the mating surfaces on the caliper, 
where the shims align using a toothbrush, but if you had a wire brush, that'd be better. After a bunch more off-camera cleaning, it's time to pull out the new hardware, lubricate, and install. I would recommend purchasing a brake lubricant that's safe on rubber and plastics because we're going to lubricate the caliper pins as well and we don't want to cause any damage to the gaskets. I uh, use an artist's sponge here to smooth out the lubricant on the mating surface of the shim. Uh, it's what I had. And you can use anything you want to evenly distribute the lubricant. I also recommend applying a little bit of the lubricant to the caliper itself. This will just cut down on brake noise and squealing. It is important though that after we install the shims, we clean up and make sure that there's no lubricant on the non-mating surfaces. Slide the shim down and into place. Notice how the V-shaped piece is opening inward to the caliper. Once you have all four installed on this caliper, it's time to clean up the area and move on to the next one. We don't want any lubricant on the outside non-mating surface. Once all four shims are installed, it's time to move on to the caliper pin. You can see that there's a gasket here holding it in place. Let me show you how to remove it. Start by gently pulling down on the rubber boot. This is pretty difficult with gloves on. If you struggle, you can use a back of a flathead screwdriver or a little pick here, as you can see. Just make sure you don't tear the rubber boot, because if you do, you're going to have to make another trip to the auto parts store. With the pin removed, I'm going to clean off the old grease and apply new grease. It's important that we apply a lot of grease here, because every time you push your foot down on the brake, this pin slides in and out. And if it's not properly lubricated, you could hear some crunching and grinding noises. I'm also going to clean whatever I can out of the inside of the boot. Then add some new grease and slide the pin back in place. The goal is for the pin to slide cleanly in and out with no crunching or grinding noises. Repeat this process for each of the pins and then we're ready to move on back to the vehicle. Slide the new rotor onto the wheel studs. If you're reusing your old rotor, make sure to have it machined first. It's a good idea to loosely spin down a few lug nuts to hold everything in place while you reinstall the caliper and bracket. Slide the caliper bracket back into place and tighten by hand the 17 millimeter bolts to hold it into place. Then we're going to grab a torque wrench and tighten down to the spec of 79 foot pounds. We'll do this for the top and the bottom. The bracket is now ready to accept new brake pads. You can see here the difference in wear between the new and the old pad. Before sliding the brake pads into place, I'm going to install a wear pin indicator on the leading edge of one of the pads. Now, I believe you can install the wear pin in any location, but a quick Google search told me to install on the inside pad as that wears the quickest and on the leading edge as that's the location where it's more likely to uh, warn you early and make noise early. So that's what I'm doing here. If you're really paranoid, I suppose you could install multiple wear pins, but if you're doing your vehicle maintenance, low brakes should be noticed. It can be a little tricky to slide the pads in. I suggest starting at an angle and then pushing down till they snap into place. With the pads in place, next grab the caliper and you can see there's not enough space to slide this down over the brake pad, so we're going to need to compress the cylinder. Cylinder compression will push brake fluid back into the system and because we don't want to damage the ABS module, I'm going to crack the bleeder valve. If you have a caliper compression tool, now's the time. In my case, I'm using a C-clamp and you can see I'm compressing down the cylinder here. It's definitely not ideal to get brake fluid onto the new pads and rotor, like you can see here. So when you do this job, angle it in a different direction. In my case, I'm going to use brake cleaner to clean up the mess later. Now that the caliper has been compressed, we can slide it over the brake pads, but first we have to install the butterfly clips. So set the caliper aside and let's do that. At this point, we should also close the bleeder valve, which I did off camera. Grab the butterfly clips. We need to install these before sliding the caliper onto the bracket over the brake pads. You can see there's two small holes at the bottom and top of each brake pad. Slide the butterfly clip into place. Now this is going to push the pads apart, so you need to hold the pads in place once they've been installed.
Slide the caliper in place over the bracket and the pads, and then grab the 14 millimeter bolts and tighten them down. I'm also going to take this opportunity to clean up the mess that I made earlier with brake cleaner. Grab a torque wrench, a 14 millimeter socket, and a 17 millimeter slim wrench, and then tighten down these bolts to 25 foot pounds. That's the spec. Crack the bleeder valve one last time. We want to make sure there's no air bubbles left in the system. When the fluid runs clean with no air, tighten it back up. And replace the dust cap. In my case, you might spend 5 or 10 minutes looking for it, but definitely find it, put it back on. Time to reinstall the wheel. Spin off the lug nuts that you were using to hold the rotor into place during the pad and bracket install. Then slide your wheel back into place. Tighten the lug nuts down in a star pattern to 76 foot-pounds. Repeat this entire process for the other wheel. When you're done, jump into the car, pump the brake a few times to get the fluid moving, and uh, I'd also take this opportunity to check the brake fluid level. If you found this video useful, please hit the like and subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. And if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. Thank you.